All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Alfonso Aswahe, Business Development Manager of our e-commerce services here at Royal Cyber. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Royal Cyber's webinar session on how Omega Engineering gain intelligent insights by transforming its data strategy. Before we deep dive into today's session, I would like to formally introduce Royal Cyber, Omega Engineering, and our lead speakers. For those not familiar with Omega Engineering, Omega it's an electrical manufacturer based out of Norwalk, Connecticut, with a manufacturing locations and sales offices throughout the world doing business in 27 countries. It's the leading international integrated single source supplier of highly engineered products and customized solutions in the process, measurement, and control industries. Omega is part of Inspectress PLC, experts in providing insight through precision measurement. Inspectress is headquartered in Egan, Missouri. United Kingdom, the company employs approximately 9,000 people located in more than 30 countries. A very strong brand, high levels of repeated business with unmatched reputation for meeting customers' needs. Now, as far as Royal Cyber, for most of you that already know, IT, Royal Cyber is an IT consulting and digital transformation company specializing in services, solutions, and software. Innovating since 2002, Royal Cyber has successfully completed over 1,500 uh, projects for over 600 happy clients worldwide through our offices across US, India, Canada, Pakistan, KSA, and New Zealand. Royal Cyber is recognized and acknowledged by customers and partners worldwide, including Fortune 500 companies, providing reliable and high-performing commerce, cloud, analytics, mobile, AI, middleware software solutions, and services. With technology partnerships, including SAP Commerce Cloud, Magento, HCL, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, among others, Royal Cyber has been serving major enterprise accounts for over for the last eight years as an IT systems integrator and trusted technology partner. Now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speakers, Kathleen Weiner, Director of Global Master Data Management at Omega Engineering, and our lead host, Awes Tariq Qureshi, Project Manager of Data Analytics and Business Intelligence, at Royal Cyber. We're excited to hear from the both of you today. Uh, but really quick, before we get started, Kathleen and Awes, can you tell us a little more about your role in the initiatives you oversee? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Kathleen Weiner. I am the Director of Global Master Data Management at Omega Engineering. Um, my primary role and focus is supporting um, the data management office and the data management space, along with business intelligence and advanced analytics. Um, and with that said, we have a, a very large platform, um, multiple systems, as indicated. Um, I come with a background of about 25 years plus in the data management field. So um, I'm all things about data. Um. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Alfonso. For I really appreciate the introduction. So a little bit about me. Uh, first of all, it's great to be speaking with all of you today. Uh, I have been working as a data warehousing and BI lead from RC in Omega. So under the guidance of Kathleen, me and my team, we are responsible for maintaining, optimizing, and upgrading the BI environment. So that was just a little bit about me. Um, Back to you, Alfonso. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that brief glance at your day to day. And once again, we're very excited to hear from the both of you today. Uh, really quick, as we look into the agenda, today we'll be covering Royal Cyber's journey at Omega and deep dive into the business challenges and renewed data strategy. We'll also look at the business intelligence environment before and after, uh, get a better understanding of the business intelligence reports and dashboards that were created followed by a quick demo. And then we'll open the floor for a Q&A session at the end, including a very special offer from Real Cyber to all attendees. Now with this brief introduction, let's go ahead and uh, direct our attention back to Iways. Take it away, Iways. Thank you very much, Alfonso. So let's start our webinar with the journey we had, the wonderful journey we, ha we are having right now with Omega and the RC. So in this, Throughout this webinar, we will be discussing the challenges we faced, what were the solutions uh, that came up based on those challenges, and what was the best uh, possible way to overcome them. So let's take a look around from where we actually started. So our the BI journey actually began in 2019. Now, 
when we came in in 2018 there was sightline ERP system that data was already there in the warehouse so that warehousing uh, environment was created in 2018 sightline data was coming in in into our warehousing environment now the need based on the business requirement the need was that we need to integrate the sap hybrid data that is the web-based data with our sightline data for analytics so we started and we started uh, integrating the sap hybrids into our sightline uh, as a first step then there was a business requirement of integrating salesforce data with the sightline and hybrid data and we wanted to uh, uh, create analytics based on that so for that we use dell boomi as a as a data bus system that pulls the data from salesforce into our warehousing environment and we integrated power bi with this entire data sources and this warehousing system that we have for the analytics and finally in 2020 the last piece the main data source that we connected with our warehouse was the salesforce einstein's analytics it is basically an ai based uh, analytics that is uh, designed over there so we wanted to see that what was the ai based data that was generated over over there in einstein and how it can help us with our own predictive models that we have built in our warehousing environment so in 2020 that was the main the last main source that we integrated so this was just a brief about some of the data sources highlights and our integration journey so if we move forward i'll just quickly explain to you what is the backbone of our current architecture right now so uh, as you can see that this is the dell boomi is our main data bus system it is connected to all our erp system sap hybris and even our warehouse as well day-to-day -day data is being flown and synced between all of these uh, you can say erp systems and the cloud-based uh, ERP system that we have right now. So this ERP, this is sightline. Sightline data is going into Salesforce on daily basis, and everything is synced uh, after every two seconds. Similarly, in these SAP hybrids, the hybrid data is also being pushed into Salesforce, uh, and all of these three environments are being synced uh, precisely to the last decimal. Then what we needed was that okay we need to pull all this data into our warehousing site so what we did was that sightline sightline uh, has the capability of being directly integrated into our warehouse so that was the easy part with hybris the hybris we integrated it using the amazon redshift technology or the amazon redshift cloud based warehousing system which has the which gave us the support to integrate directly with our azure sql environment and Finally, the um, uh, and then finally, what we did was that we integrated these analytics tool, the Power BI, with our current warehousing environment, and from there we are generating all our analytics and all our reports. So this was a brief uh, intro about the high-level architecture that is being uh, implemented in the Omega environment, and that's what we are maintaining right now. So moving forward, I would just like to introduce Kathleen so she can tell a little bit about the challenges that we face and what were the solutions uh, that came out of those challenges. So Kathleen, please take take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Um, well, it was a, a very large journey, but not a long journey. So um, we had a lot of issues with our data. There was quite a bit of um, off of the out of the um, uh, infrastructure work being done people saving data on their, their local environments um, and to be quite frank as of 2017 this time in 2017 we did not even have a data warehouse we were pulling we have 14 instances of sightline which is our erp system we did not have integration with SAP. We did not have integration with Delbumi at that time. And we did not have our Salesforce plugged in. So with that said, there was a lot of data uh, work that had to be done as the foundation before we can move forward with uh, building out this wonderful analytic platform that we have right now. So with that said, we established in 2018 our data warehouse we then in turn integrated um, within 2018 all of the erp systems so we had one single view of data 
prior to that, there was uh, extracts of sightline put into a data mark and massaged together with no logic with a very manual, semi-automated, intense work efforts. Um, and then moving into our data warehouse. There we were able to understand the data quality issues we had. We had significant issues. And from there, we built out a dynamic data model. So by bringing all the data into one uh, platform, into um, uh, one data warehouse, it was very structured in, um, in table-based uh, methodology. We were able to build a dynamic data model. Then in turn, we were able to define the data in a metadata perspective and a business perspective, which was very large, very huge effort, but was very valuable, which in turn helped us um, build those data cubes, graduating from a data mark. So we now bring our logic to the top of, of, of the, the, the cubes versus building this intense logic, lines and lines and lines of code and um, information within the data to deliver it into a visualization that can be consumed. Um, and with this, do we integrate, started integrating data sources and we're also embarking on now, since we've evolved, third-party data. We're bringing that into our environment as well so we can do some predictive analysis. We've op optimized our stored procedures. We have all different technologies for ETL processes. As you can see, the list of technologies at the bottom of the deck. Um, of this slide, if you will. Um, and from all of that, it took us two and a half years with a fabulous um, partnership with Royal Cyber. And I mean partnership, because in my uh, 25 plus years of experience, where I have seen um, efforts such as this to taking your, your data strategy and evolving it into something that is consumable and, use, and, and, and has the use, you need to have a partnership. It's not a consultant team that could come in and just deliver. There's a par partnership here. And uh, because of that, we were able to build a warehouse, integrate it, add new tools, and now have advanced analytics and insights on data that never in Omega's, um, you know, uh, 60 plus years to, to it's, the company's been around about 60 years they now have the insights that um, they've never had before. I right. Go to the next slide. And, and right, and I would just like to add, this all happened with the leadership and the guidance that we got from Omega, especially from Kathleen. So we were able to achieve all of these tasks in, in such a short period of time. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. And okay, so uh, please, Kathy, uh, go ahead. So, and just to recap some of the things that were said in the previous slide, um, the results of that due diligence, and again, it's hard to believe that two and a half years uh, from the time the data warehouse was deployed for us to be, um, which you will see as we go through this um, uh, webinar, what we have been able to achieve in such a short time is that foundation of the data. So when we consolidated the data sources, the the um, and and build out the mappings. It was easier. It made it much easier um, for the integration to happen, and also for the data science capabilities. We are not only you know building those building logic and cause and effect perspective in our data to understand you know where we have opportunities to increase revenue. We've also been able to introduce algorithms that give us some predictive analysis that say there is a you know 80 percent chance that you can um, uh, sell in a new market so we've introduced ourselves into two new markets since we've been a, once since we've deployed this platform so um, data accessibility is another thing a lot of uh, the leadership my senior executives my l1s my l2s um, trying to get insights on data have always been very um, uh, difficult because there were a lot of roadblocks. We did not offer self-service self -service capabilities. There was a lot of engagement of massaging of data, building out reports, and turning those over to our leaders. Now they have been trained and have capability to do off the uh, on-the-fly analytics, do ad hoc reporting, lots of self-serving going on and uh, we could we just support all of the executive reporting and are here to build out and execute on any strategies that they have or any strategic plans they have over the course of a year to three to five we support all of those um, uh, data initiatives 
and we've been able to do that now with the environment we have. And which leads us to our maturity model. So um, we still have a bit of a way to go, but in two and a half years, we have been able to build a data foundation, have a descriptive analytics environment, and now we're in predictive in a predictive phase. And with you know with with as time goes on, our plan is to be more introducing more third party data that is external for us to really truly crawl over different markets and where we can gain more market share as we grow through this maturity model. Thank you, Kathleen. So I, now I will be discussing the business intelligence environment that was before and when we started working and this partnership, what the actual outcome of this partnership was. So it's actually the outcome of this partnership. This after model will be the result of that. So let me show you basically what the environment was before so as you can see the only environment at that particular time was that we have this one big warehouse and there's only one erp data that is coming over here and for there just like kathleen mentioned that uh, the power bi was integrated at that time but the reports uh, that were being built were uh, simplistic and there was lots of massaging of data and there was no predictive capability at that particular time so we wanted to grow we wanted to upgrade the environment and we wanted to see okay what could be the result of that so based on that we started working on the integration of data sources so trust me when i say that if you want to get into this prediction or the predictive models or the predictive environments you cannot rely on only one data source even in 2021 we have big plans for integrating different data sources that can be from government or that can be from the uh, market side so we are planning to integrate that data sources as well so our prediction can be more accurate so right now what we have done in this environment is that as you can see previously it was just sightline that was coming into our uh, azure sql uh, warehouse then what we did was that we introduced sap hybris using the amazon redshift uh, technology so amazon redshift is picking up data from hybris and then pushing it into our sql warehouse environment uh, similarly there was another need that came in later in 2020 that there's another powerhouse uh, warehouse management system or an ERP system that needs to be added into our you know uh, source of proof that is our warehouse so we what we did was that we uh, it has the compatibility of uh, with uh, linking with the SSIS tool and then this SSIS tool is pushing the data into our warehouse similarly for Salesforce uh, like previously defined the Dell Boomi is the data bus over here so Salesforce and Einstein's data both of these data is coming through Dell Boomi and into our warehouse and then there was this another very unique request that the Splunk basically uh, is uh, collects all your uh, website related data that uh, okay what were the uh, number of times the item was repeated or it was you know searched in that particular uh, web page so that Splunk data we introduce Python over here so Python act as a you can say a script or an API that pulls data from Splunk and then pushes into our warehouse as well and finally the last piece we did was this Genesis pure cloud so this is basically all the conversation or calls related data between the customer and our sales agent that was being generated in this genesis pure cloud so we introduced a java based api that pulls the data from genesis into our warehouse as well and after all that data was integrated and fitted into our warehouse then we applied those analytics using the power bi now right now um, for this current month this Google Analytics you see over here it will it now does not belongs outside this environment it comes inside this big box that you can see over here because now we have integrated Google Analytics into our warehouse as well so before that what we were doing is that all the data that was coming into analytics we integrated outside source data like Google Analytics into our Power BI we also had some requirement business requirement that the data is present in SharePoint and we need to do 
integrate into our analytics as well so then we linked sharepoint over here as well and this uh, icon over here this is basically uh, the data that is present on our local servers so not only our analytics are picking up data from cloud it is also picking up data from our local servers as well and everything is being integrated into a single predictive analytics that we are doing right now so this was a little bit about the environment that we with the collaboration with the collaboration with omega leadership and kathleen we uh, came up with now a brief overview of some of the reports and dashboards that we have built as a result of collecting and integrating all those data all that data into our warehouse so with that let me go through our first uh, this actually this report uh, what you are seeing right now is the first step in the predictive analysis world that we took so there was a business requirement kathleen uh, i mean the uh, the requirement was that we wanted to see opportunities for those particular customers right so uh, yes, in this report, yeah right so right so, so, so based on please go ahead i was let me give a little bit of business background so for the folks that are on the call that are from the business if Great. in speaking um on the landscape that that uh and all the technology that always just shared um where there was a will there was a way most cases when you are trying to integrate data you look at what's compatible we took it to another level we didn't take a, a system that said this cannot be integrated with your warehouse we took it to the next level and did our research and investigations in order to determine how the best way to do to migrate our data from all these different sources so with that said we that's why we have so many different connectors and um, it's not so much a service. We, we monitor that information on a daily basis so we know when things are, if, if something should happen. So you don't just look for one way to integrate, you look for uh, whatever you can find. And that's what really made that environment agile is because we partnered on, the, uh, on a solution that would work and it didn't matter about the technology. We looked for the ways that we can um, mirror up that technology with the needs of our business which then resulted into this cross-sell upsell analysis, which a, we were able to bring in past data that when, even went all the way back to a VAX environment, if you can believe that. It's, it's very true. That's how old the data was in some spaces. And we were right. able to bring that in and take a look at how our customer buying behavior was over years and segmentate the data. We have segmentation of this data that allowed us to be able to bucket the analysis in and score it. So we knew where, you know, we have loyal customers, we can market to them, but what about those customers that were one-time buyers and where they fell into a high um, uh, revenue range? This, um, this information was um, able to, to be delivered to us because of the way we were integrating the data and the um, rules that we were uh, putting in the algorithms that allowed us to get these results. So I'll let you take it away, Awais. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Kathleen, for this uh, brief introduction about the background. So yeah, based on what Kathleen said, that these were the business requirement that came in. So what we did was that we created those buckets and we placed those customers based on the, uh, you can say the KPIs. So, okay, if a customer belongs to this 25,000 buckets, how many customers are there? If, it, uh, if the customer belongs to above 150,000 bucket, how many customers are there? And right now, as you can see that there are lots of filters on the left side as well. So this entire report is so dynamic that you can uh, cross check whether uh, how, how many what type of product or what type of uh, the items that the customers were buying or if they're like more than one type of customer that uh, that, that the uh, our customer base was buying so this bucketing automatically placed them in those area based on the kpis that we defined so this was the first view of the cross sell analysis web uh, that we built that took us to this uh, productive uh, predictive level so if I move on, so this is now another uh, second view of that same customer bucketing system that we saw. So what we have did, did over here is that, okay, if you want to see that, let's say this customer is our top performer 
and we wanted to analyze okay what this customer was buying what was his buying behavior throughout the years how much that customer contributed to our profit margins and how much sales were generated by that customer so this uh, picture that you can see over here of our report this basically gives you an in-depth analysis of that particular customers and on the top right you can see these are all the items that the customer purchased so this was the second phase of finally uh, you know going and identifying those opportunities that we might have uh, doing this uh, cross-sell analysis so if I go on to the final step so this is basically the you can say the main punchline of that entire work that we did so what happened was uh, what happened over here is that when when we saw the uh, in-depth analysis of that particular customer we saw that okay this was the item that was being bought the most highest time by that particular customer and we wanted to see if we can sell that item to our other customers who have not actually bought that item so based on the algorithm that we uh, designed it showed us all those customers who belong to that similar industry they were buying similar products uh, but they were not buying that particular product so that gave us an opportunity to whenever we are interacting with that customer we can always do the cross sell of that particular item to that customer and we can say that okay customers from the same industries are buying these products as well and they are really hot selling products so this could benefit you so that gave us a revenue boost uh, based on what the analytics that we did so um, Kathy is that right or uh, yeah, I mean, yes that's, that's, that's exactly correct so um, it more importantly to be able to drill down into our individual customers especially the low ranking ones was able to help us understand where we were missing the mark and we did we increased our revenue by 12 percent when we deployed this capability because of the um uh, marketing campaigns we could run because the results of this data is basically internal but what this drives for us is to build those marketing campaigns and more focused marketing campaigns instead of going out and hitting all your customers we were able to centralize and have specific focus groups where we knew what we can offer and what may entice that customer to reach out to us or start buying from our website. So, um, and, and all of this uh, information, most of these reports are mobile capability. So my, our senior execs can take a look in if they're uh, visiting a customer or, or talking to a vendor, they have the capability to take a look at you know what our customers are purchasing and if we're in a low ranking space what can we do what kind of relationship can we uh, obtain with a vendor to increase that capability with our customers in the products that we're manufacturing based on their components they sell us so there's a lot of great information in this that we never had before thank you Kathleen okay so now just to show you another example of uh, the what was the fruit or the benefits of integrating all that data into our system so right now what you are seeing over here is that this is the google analytics data now we wanted a question came up that there's a there was a project launch known as the product findability so we wanted to check okay how easy the product is visible or available to our customers when they are browsing our websites or when they're doing a Google search. So how often our uh, items or products pops up whenever they're uh, searching for a special uh, special pressure uh, product or temperature based product. So that data was being stored in the Google uh, Analytics. So what we did was that then we pulled in the Google uh, Analytics data into our own uh environment into our power bi and then we mix and merge that data with our own data that was coming from different erp systems so this report tells you basically uh how many clicks were done on which pages uh what was the transactions that were generated for that particular page and what was the revenue or the dollar value that accumulated to uh, uh 
to the our web pages or to the searches that the customers did and this entire thing is based on all the dates that you can see over here so we can drill down to even the uh, single day per month or per week so this will give you uh, a, a broader angle of okay what the customers were purchasing uh, yes Kathy please go ahead Ooh. Yes, yeah, so this is just a, just one of many of the views that we have from, from the Google data. And what this does is it drives us to where we need to improve on our e-commerce footprint. So um, we have great visibility. We're looking at it on a daily basis, even during a day. We could be, if we have a, a launch that's going out, a new product launch, we can see from the moment it's launched how, what, what, how the customers are receiving this product. So um, we, we just analyze this traffic, and with that, it gives us the capability to be agile in enhancing our e-commerce uh, footprint. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, okay, so that was one of the example uh, of the external data source that we integrated. Now, in this same project, there was another business requirement. They wanted to see, okay, they, so let me give you a, a bit of background about Caltrax. So Caltrax is an application that stores customer service data. So there was a request that, okay, we wanted to see how was the customer experience with our website through our services and through the product delivery system. So what happened was that this application, once the product was shipped and received by the customer, a questionnaire popped up uh, in front of the customer. So customer fills out some of their questions and details and based on the numbering system that the Caltrex people have designed, they were uh, generating the numbers and the values based on the customer satisfaction rates, how easy it was for them to go through our website and find the product and the likelihood for them to return back to be a repeat, uh, to be our repeat customers. And this above graph shows you this website experience score. So let me tell you that um, in from August till September, there was a big effort that was done on the uh, on the optimizing of the web experience in Omega. And based on that, you can see that result that that has gone the highest over here, 71%. Now, this type of information can only be uh, gotten from external sources which are specialized in those areas. So this basically call trace data helped us to further improve the customer experience for our websites and the product uh, product findability uh, project and objective that we have, you know, uh, right now it's ongoing. So that was a bit of this. And uh, Kathleen, would you like to add something over here? I mean, you, you said it very well. It, we did this internally. We didn't have to go out. You know, it was our partnership with our consulting vendor that's in Omega with us as our partner and um, the teams internally, Omega folks. Um, we were able to build this structure, utilizing this application and integrating it into our systems to understand um, our uh, footprint on the e-commerce side. With it, without that, we would have had to invest quite a bit of money to bring other people in to help understand how we can improve our website. Instead, we are doing it internally. So it gives us a faster turnaround on uh, improvements. Okay, great. Thank you, Kathleen. So based after that, uh, there now that was another project. Now, there was also business requests coming in from different operation sites. So, there was a request of uh, from the demand planners, from the demand planners of the item that, okay, they wanted to find out all those items uh, for next year, for the next quarter, or in the next six months. They needed to prepare themselves, okay, which items are basically contributing the most in our revenue. So what we did over here was that we applied the 80-20 rule and we convert it into our own algorithm. So a bit about 8020, basically what this report is showing right now for the demand planners is that, what were the items that contributed 80, what were the 20% items that contributed 80% of the revenue in our, uh, in our uh, profit books? Then what were the rest of the 80% items that contributed 20% of the revenue? Now, 
this algorithm was built mainly with the focus in mind that we need to plan we need to plan for those materials for those items that were contributing the most so in case of any problem just right now like we can see that 2020 it's been a hard year all over the globe uh, due to the pandemic and everything so this report was basically designed for that to give you that forecasting ability that okay these are the materials that we need to procure and we need to procure some extra in case if there's any shortage or if there's any problem in the market so that at least we 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 are able to provide those highest selling items to all our loyal and you know returning customers as well so this report was basically designed on that format so moving on um, then we talked about the cross sell that we did in our bi space now this cross sell um, uh, report predictive report that we did earlier so that was well received by omega people the omega leadership and they wanted what they wanted in fact i think it was the initiative of kathleen she wanted to have that same type of predictive uh, uh, opportunities visible to the customer or the sales agents when they're talking to the customers right at that moment so what we did was that we picked up that predictive algorithm then we applied that algorithm in salesforce einstein so from there now whenever there's a call comes in for to a sales agent from any of the customer what the first thing appears on their screen right now is that they see the items ordered by that customer the one they're talking to this gives them a, a complete detail okay these were the items that they bought which were the most bought items and which were the least buy items so this gives them this prepares them what they're going to talk about with the customer then on the same screen there's another visual that pops up that says okay who are the similar customers who belong to that similar industry and who are buying uh, what they are buying what the other items that they are buying but we wanted to give the facility or you can say the functionality to a sales agent that the sales agent doesn't have to think okay from all of these 10 15 items which one i'm gonna pitch it to the customer so what we did was that the final step we uh, created those possible opportunities for cross sell so what this last picture tells them that okay these are the items that the customer has not bought yet but these items are being bought by other customers who belong to the similar industry so this gave them the capability to while discussing with the customer they can offer them the best possible item that uh, that they can while during a live call so with that uh, kathy please if i have missed something please do add in uh, so, so sure sure so just in a business perspective again um the idea was we put so much work into the algorithms that we built for our senior leaders to have a good understanding of um you know what, what we can sell to the other customers what's the customer's buying behavior over year year over year um so the thought was well we went through all of this work so why can't we lift it and load it we had salesforce we were just introducing it to the business folks we had deployed it we had einstein licensing so with that said we took those algorithms and tweaked them in order to support that same capability but utilizing pure cloud and genesis so the phone call comes in the customer is recognized and now it's in front of the sales agent or the customer care agent where they can say that i could see what you've been purchasing they see what other customers are purchasing that are similar to what the customer is buying that they're speaking to and here these are the products that the customer that's on the phone is not buying in most cases our phone calls are about projects because our data is all about engineer so it's all engineers speak we are speaking to engineers and they have a project that they're working on in their organization and they need parts and here if we understand what their project is when we're on the phone we can offer them components and um, items that they normally wouldn't think of but we see it now that would help their project because of this algorithm that we were able to apply Thank hugely you, successful very successful 
Thank you. So let's uh, move on. And right now there was um, okay. There is another uh, operational team that uh, that we call the on-time shipment, or the they look at look at the on-time shipments of all our product. So the requirement was that they wanted to see okay which items that were not shipped on time. Based on that, they defined us certain rules. So they wanted to see okay how many items that were zero days late means they were on time then how many items uh, that were one day late two day late and it goes on till i mean 15 16 and more than 16 days so that was the rule that was given to us so based on that we uh, designed an algorithm that tells the end user that okay these are the items that belong to a certain product code and they belong to a certain type of product uh, that we have right now and they are being late so this gave them an eye opener that okay these are the areas these are the items these are the product families that we need to look into why they are being delayed why the customer are not receiving that on time shipment that we have uh, the, the kps that we have defined so our goal was that the on time shipment percent for all of these rules should be at least 80 percent and above so as you can see based on the uh, analytics that were designed we were able to manage that we were able to overcome the challenges the operational gaps and then this team started working on the timely delivery of all the products to our end customers and also as you can see that uh, the, this entire report is fully dynamic you can select the country you can uh, select the ship year the month and then the work center where the product were created and there's you can search it by customer items how many days late so there are lots of angles that the end user can see and check okay where was the operational get at which time which date which year which month so this was a little bit of what we did for the on time shipment team that is currently there in omega as well so uh, okay now moving on now this report that we created uh, this was requested by one of the top leaders in Omega and this report basically tells you about uh, who are our top customers strategic customers so strategic customers there's certain KPIs that we have defined that if they lie in that certain area they become our strategic customers this uh, report has the capability to tell you okay these are the strategic customers they were strategic right now and you can even go back you can even go uh, a, a year back and see okay if that customer was strategic at that time or if uh, or is still strategic for the same year as well so that gave the ability for the leadership to think okay if they lost a strategic customer which was in previous year so what happened why they lost it in in this current year so this tells you the products they bought the items and in which industry they belong to and this is basically this report was designed to tell you and give you those analytics um, Kathy would you like to please add in uh, in this report? sure sure this is um, really a, a, a key report for our senior execs in the sales uh, space and really they didn't have the insight required to really um, understand why we would have fallout in our strategic strategic accounts. So as uh, always described, we have specific KPIs that that uh, you know tag your customer as a strategic account, and it's very valuable for us to keep that because keep an understanding of those customers because that's how we plan our product inventory. That's how we plan. On you know ensuring that our on-time shipping numbers are at 92% and don't fall below that. So those are all the criteria within the organization that we follow. But more importantly, this gives a bird's eye view. There's a tote board that's across the top that scrolls all day long. It's a cell phone viewing, so they can pick up their mobile phone and they can see where their customer is at a certain point in time. And if there's a dip in the strategic um, if there's a dip in the in the numbers or the strategic customer falls off the KPI, it's an instant meeting and such, which they didn't have visibility to that. 
only on a monthly basis. Now they have it at a moment's notice. So it, it was another very big win for us as well. Very true. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, okay, moving on to another top executive report that we built. So basically this report is another customer's, uh, you can say a different angle to view the customer. So this report basically tells you about the orders and sales, the orders generated and what was actually de delivered to that customer, what was the numbers. And this report gives you uh, who were my monthly top customers, who were my top customer the previous three months, and who was who who are my top customer for that particular day. So this is another view, and it is basically designed for mobile friendly view as well. So this uh, type of data dashboard is available on your mobile. You can easily look in if you're even away. Uh, you can just check your mobile, and this data is being refreshed on daily basis so everything is current everything uh, all the data that is coming is dynamic it's live and the end user can always check okay who were my top customers and who did well and who are not performing that well and who were my top performers for that particular day as well so uh, uh, Kathleen uh, anything you want to add before I move on no, nope, this is, uh, again, this is a senior executive report. It's on the eyes of the senior executives. Um, and this is a view of a daily, uh, monthly, and past three month view. And it helps them have a good understanding of the trends, especially this year because of the pandemic. It was truly, under, we were uh, essential. So our organization did not shut down during the pandemic, but we did have. Uh, we needed to have a very close view of our customers who may be closing because there was a lot of times where other organizations were shipping out product that would get lost or would get stored in a UPS and um, uh, warehouse because of the organizations being closed. This helped us understand what our customers were buying in ahead, ahead of time um, prior, to do, but prior to shipping and we were able to hold a lot of the shipments as well as satisfy the customer's need at the point that they opened. We had everything ready to go for them. So we, it really helps us understand their buying performance and help the leadership make some really fast, uh, really hard and fast decisions during some difficult times. So. Great, thank you, Kathleen. So with that, this was some of the reports, some of the reports. We have huge inventory of reports that are currently working right now. But these were some of the reports or the analytics that we designed based on the business requirements that came in. So with that, let me give you a brief demo of one of the predictive report that we built and how it operates and its dynamic features. So with that, let me go to that report and let me go to full view. Okay. So here you can see this is the first uh, report that you saw earlier. This is the cross-sell analysis that we did. Now, the entire objective and the purpose of this report was that we defined certain KPIs. We wanted to know, okay, which customer belongs in which bucket or in which uh, revenue range. So based on that, we devised this bucketing system over here. So this bucketing system starts from above 150K, 200k 250k and then below 25k the numbers you see over here are basically the customers right now and you're you must be thinking okay how there's only one customer there are two customer in that area and there's 4922 customer that belongs in the 25k bucket so this entire thing is being uh, controlled over here from these filters over here so let's say i want you to check okay the customers who brought multiple family codes uh, the three you see over here is basically how many family codes that they bought. So if you want, you can always select, okay, I wanted to see the customers who bought only single family code and uh, what, what uh, bucket they lie in. So this report will change based on whatever conditions that you have provided over here. So you can search it by industry, the product code, the customer uh, by year and the number of different items bought by uh, those customers. So this bucketing will explain you a bit about that. So now, this is just a summary page or the main page that we see in this cross-sell analysis report. So let's say that you wanted to analyze a particular customer and see 
what was its uh, the, that customer's buying behavior and what that customer was buying uh, was buying sorry so for that we uh, added the drill down capability in this report so let's say if i hover over this customer now this will show you over we, now we are collecting four years worth of data over here. So this customer will give you uh, this view will give you a brief overview of how the customer performed throughout those four years. But I needed to see further what this customer bought. So if I go and just drill down to analyze this customer. Now this report will give you an in-depth view of that what that customer was buying the trends the uh, the profit margins the sales it generated and the items that were that were highest uh, bought by that customer so these are all our items and we can see that okay this particular item was bought the most time by that particular customer now then we started thinking okay if we see this highest bought uh, item right now so how we can pitch it to our all the other customers who have not bought this item so then we devised an algorithm we uh, applied the drill through capability over here and at the back end we devised the uh, algorithm that shows you let me drill down through here and this is the end result that we can see right now so i wanted to analyze that particular item and what is my opportunity of uh, pitching that item to all those customers that they have not bought so the above screen over here it shows you all those uh, that particular item and what was the other item that was related to it and was bought by the customers so this graph will tell you that okay the item similar to this and how many times it was bought then this below graph will show you okay customer wise and it will give you a customer wise analysis that okay these are the customers who bought that same uh, that particular item along with another item and we can select the industries over here we can select any industry and then we can search it based on the industry uh, over here as well so what how this report works you just have to select a single item i want to see okay what is my opportunity for this particular item that is not bought by the customer so in this below right uh, table that you see right now this will give you the information okay this particular uh, this particular customer bought this item but this customer has not bought this item now this customer can belong to a different type of industry and this uh, right next to it it will show you okay all the other customers who belong to that same industry were buying this item along uh, this particular item as well so this will give you an opportunity to do a cross sell when you're talking to the customer that same customers from the similar industry are buying this item as well this is one of the highly utilized item by that customer in that industry and this could benefit you as well and just like we discussed before this gave us a big break and you know this gave us a revenue boost when we started uh, this uh, predictive based opportunities that pops up in front of a sales agent and that sales agent starting pitching those items uh, to the to the potential customer as well so this was basically a brief demo of the predictive analytical reporting that we did and i think because of the shortage of time um, we uh, i cannot uh, I, I want to show, give you another demo of another report that we did, but based on the shortage of time, this will be the end of my demo right now. So with that, uh, I would just like to in I would just like to introduce Alfonso to take it away from here. And thank you so much for listening uh, to me and Kathleen. And I really appreciate all of you coming here. So from onwards, Alfonso, over to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Alice. Thank you, Kathleen. As you guys already know, as part of this webinar, we're offering to all attendees a two-week data analytics and business intelligence complementary assessment. Uh, the assessment uh, is going to consider business objectives, business strategy, enterprise metrics, and consists of Royal Cyber's recommended plans for short-term and long-term analytics opportunities prioritized 
based on visibility and return on investment. It also includes a data governance assessment to improve data governance structure, strategies, practices, and policies. From an information architecture standpoint, Royal Cyber will assess business objectives, business processes, and architectural strategy. We'll also be assessing skills inventory matching, uh, the proficiency of employees to skills needed for vision critical functions. We'll take a look at process and doing cross-functional mapping of key internal relationships to identify process processes in need of strategic improvement and determine if current technology and systems meet or miss at driving process efficiencies, enables process uh, streamlining and ensures the competitive advantage. Um, so we hope um, all attendees are able to take advantage of this special offer. Uh, and if there's no more questions, I just want to take a quick ch uh, uh, chance to just thank again uh, Kathleen and Alwitz for your time today and giving us an in-depth look into how Omega Engineering, with the help of Royal Cyber, gained intelligent insights by transforming its data strategy. And of course, thank you all uh, for attending today's webinar. Please go ahead and feel free to send any additional questions that might have that you might have now or in the future to our team. We wanna make sure that you know that we're here as a resource and we love to be an asset to your team with insights or any support that you guys might need. I know we covered a lot of information on this session. So for this reason, we'll be sharing the webinar recording with you shortly, including additional insights into our two week data analytics and business intelligence complimentary assessment. And on behalf of our Real Cyber family, thank you everyone. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful holiday season. Take care.